Good evening, everybody. This is Arcacia with Patch Homeschoolers. That's Peoria Area Association of Christian Homeschoolers. And tonight we're talking with Rachel Carmen. Rachel's going to be joining us next week for our Mom's Night Out. So good evening, Rachel. It's glad to have you here. Thanks for having me, dear. I'm glad to be here. Well, we're really excited to have you for our Mom's Night. And in case people don't know who Rachel Carmen is, you're a podcaster, you're a speaker, um, you're a homeschooling, former homeschooling mama because you graduated your last yeah. one. Yeah. And you guys, you and De uh, Davis own Apology Educational Studio. So why don't we just start with um, giving us a little bit of a, your background information about who you are in case people do not know who you are. Okay, so um, I always want to make sure that I mention that I was a resistant homeschool mom, um, because I find that very often when you talk about someone who has 26 years of homeschooling experience and graduated seven, everybody's like, oh, well, yeah, it's not that. So um, God introduced me to homeschooling uh, 33 years ago when our oldest son was born. And I was totally against it. I mean, the first time I heard the words, I was like, well, I don't know who that's for, but it ain't for me, right? That is not <laughs> for me. And uh, I, we lived on a street in a town that there were five stay-at-home moms. And those women were just... I don't know that I can still not talk about them without getting emotional. They were such a blessing to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was bullheaded, arrogant, thought I knew it all. First time mom with a baby on my hip. Right. And they were just so kind and generous to me. And they taught me so much and I didn't even know it until years later. Anyway, fast forward and God brought Davis and I to an intersection with our oldest son where it wasn't working with him in the school and we really <clears throat> met him. and 26 years later, we graduated our youngest number seven. So I got into this thinking, yeah, not for me. And God was like, honey, I have a different plan. I have a better plan for you. I have a better plan for your kids. And yeah, this is for you. And so our journey, some people do this and speak and encourage people to homeschool and they always wanted to, right? Mm-hmm. That wasn't my story. And yet, I mean, I had a plan for my life, right? This was not it. Um, but I'm so grateful that God interjected himself, that I had this intersection moment, that he extended me the invitation to do something amazing. And that by the movement of the spirit that we did it. And, and, and I think that that's a poignant thing right now, because I think there's a lot of moms out there that are like, yeah, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. not for me. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. Let's talk about that. Let's, right. let's have that conversation. Well, it's funny how God redirects our paths. Cause I know for me personally, when we started homeschooling, it wasn't my idea. It was my husband's yeah. <laughs> it okay, wasn't wow. even on the radar. It was not even on our radar. Well, it wasn't on my radar. It must've been on his radar because <laughs> it wasn't on my radar. And he just, uh, I was getting ready to register my oldest daughter for kindergarten. He's like, Oh, I thought we was going to homeschool. I mean, we never had a conversation about it before that moment until then. <laughs> Wow. So, I mean, total redirection of God's plan for our lives too. So it's funny how God knows that path that he has for us and mm -hmm. he walks us through every step of the way. And it's just very encouraging to know that he's, he's got us in his hands. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm very, very grateful. And I, and I really do believe there's a lot of moms out there. That's exactly where they are. This is, this was never what they thought they would do. And yet God is extending them an opportunity to be a part of something amazing. And so again, let's, let's talk about that. Yep. That's awesome. So what you're going to be talking about next week. So you're going to be here next Thursday at Calvary Bible in Lincoln, Illinois. And we're going to have a mom's night. You guys can register online at www.patch.org. We'd love to have you. Um, it is a pre-registered event. So you do need to be registered ahead of time to get, we don't have walk-ins available that night, but what you're going to talk about next week is in this moment. Now we've all had you know, we just got through and in this moment, the past two and a half, three years with the COVID thing. But I yeah. think that we can probably quote those in this moment, different times in our, in our lives. There was always those in those moments about what do we do? We didn't expect ourselves in this situation or that situation. So you're going to talk a little bit about this. Give us a little prelude of what we're going to talk about next week. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you did great, actually. Um, the whole point is it's very, it's very easy for us to get like hyper-focused on our moments. Mm. 
and start whining and wallowing in our moment. And we think nobody else understands. No one else mm-hmm. has ever been here. No one else gets it. Nobody else understands. It's just us and we don't deserve it. And it's not fair. So I posit that's not true. That if you if you take the biblical narrative, so Genesis all the way to Revelation 20, you know, 39 books, 27 books, 66 books. If you start in Genesis and go all the way through the narrative, it's that's what it is. It's a series of moments. Mm-hmm. It's a series, it's one invitation repeated serially in all of these moments. The God of the universe going, Do you trust me? Mm. will you be a part of what I'm doing right here right now right and it's it's a broad question it's a question to everyone and it's a question to every one right and so I want to talk about that a little bit I want to talk about we're gonna I've got a whole slide my son is an artist I have two sons that are artists uh, my second son who is a professional artist now my youngest son is also an artist but he's still in school but so my old, my second son did the slides. It's worth just the slides, right? Because he did all the illustrations, but he's illustrated some of these moments. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to talk about some of those because I think, again, it's so easy to read this book and it's blah, 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 blah. And we forget that these were real people. Yeah. And we forget that we've got the story arc. I mean, I can talk to you about these people and you're like, yeah, but it worked out. And I'm like, but we know that. They right. didn't know that. They didn't know they that. They did not know that. They're in this moment, this crisis moment. I mean, some really intense moments. So I'm going to try to build that in, you know, bring them to life, bring some breath into these stories so that we can go, oh, wow, I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. This is a moment, but, and that, that part I'll say for our time together. And then we're going to zero in on one character. Um, I mean, I think you've heard me talk enough times and I'm sorry, my kids are blowing up on their Facebook page. <laughs> no worries. Um, they, they get awake this time of night, you know, and it just goes, <laughs> um, it's, Every time I talk about a book of the Bible or a passage or a writer or a character, I'm like, they're my favorite, right? But this particular character, I have just grown to love him. Mm. And I really think if we can dare to remember that these were real people, just like you and me, and that the God of the universe wanted us to have his story of their stories. Mm -hmm for our encouragement and our good, I think that perspective is a game changer. And I I think the objective is not to be overwhelmed by the moment or taken under by the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of us, surely, surely I'm not alone in thinking this last moment was going to take me under. Well, you're speaking to the crowd here because I mean, we're going through some situations in our own life that I feel, I just was talking to a friend yesterday. Well, I was like, I feel really overwhelmed at the moment. Like everything is on top of me. And so I'm going to be very encouraged. I'm planning on taking notes and being very attentive next Thursday. I have a beautiful outline for you that I will bring. <laughs> but yeah, I, come, I come bring a friend, register, but come. And because if, even if you're not in that moment, it's still a moment, right? Mm-hmm. That you're aware of that God's inviting you to, because here's the deal. And someone said this to me one time, Arcasia, and you know, sometimes people say things and you're like, I really wish you hadn't said that. I mean, I was a lot happier. Like the people yep. that told me that when I had all toddlers or when everybody was shorter than me, somebody told me these are the easiest days. And mm-hmm. I was just like, I did not need you to tell me that, right? I mean, <laughs> there are things that, we can be in places in our life and everything's just rolling. Mm -hmm. Everything's just going. Sometimes one time somebody said, look, you're either coming out of a valley or you're going into one. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I didn't like, I don't like that. That's not wrong. Right. 
because we're in this process of sanctification, becoming what we've been declared. And that means we go up and down, right? We're on the mountain. Mm -hmm. We're in the valley. We're on the mountain. We're in the valley. We're beside still water. We're in the valley. And so even if this isn't where you are right now, what might God do in terms of you being able to roll this forward, right? Mm -hmm. And encourage one of your kids or your husband or a friend or neighbor. I mean, nothing's wasted with God. So, you know, I, I believe that it's, it's really easy for us to go, ah, that's not for me. I'm like, ah, it's for mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah. It's for right. everybody. Definitely. Well, we're definitely excited to have you in town with us next weekend. And there's going to be a short question and answer time afterwards. So the ladies Perfect. can get some questions answered. If they've had that unnerving question, they've always want to ask you. We'll let them answer. Ask it. <laughs> that would be great. And I'm just looking forward to meeting everybody. It'll be great to be there. It will be a great time for just moms hanging out and just getting some encouragement. We're going to have some small refreshments, some juice and cookies and stuff too. So we're just really looking forward to this time next week. So again, it's next Thursday, October 6th at Calvary Bible in Lake in Illinois. You can register on our website at www.hatch.org. And Rachel, we can't wait to have you come out next week. Thanks again so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to it. I look forward to meeting everybody. Thanks, Rachel. Bye.